Hey everyone, today I want to share something personal, the dark sides of being an AI engineer. And no, not the stuff you've heard a hundred times, like that I fear AI is taking all jobs. Instead, I want to share my real world experience and insights that I've gathered from interacting with current and former colleagues. These are things that often get overlooked in other day of the life of a software or AI engineer video with free food, shiny products and other hype topics. So today I'm highlighting the negative aspects of life as an AI engineer. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you agree on and what you disagree with. Thank you very much for your comments. The first one is data quality and availability. So many people underestimate how crucial good data is for modern AI systems. The best algorithms or LLMs are useless if the data is poor. And projects often fail because either there is no suitable data available or the data quality is very low. But without sufficient and clean data, even the most brilliant ideas just remain prototypes. But after management or the product manager sees the poor quality of the product, it often gets blamed on the AI engineers. It's not because they are bad people, but it's a lack of understanding from product management or management side how important data really is. The second reason is the high costs of AI systems. So AI systems are more expensive than many anticipate. When you use a, let's say, normal Java application, you spin up a container, let it run somewhere in the cloud and it's done. But with AI systems, especially during the testing phase, operational costs like using an API or having the need for GPUs can be significant. And this frequently leads to friction with management who may underestimate these expenses. As a result, the development process can quite be a costly endeavor. The third one is complex skill set requirements. Unlike many other IT jobs, AI development requires a unique blend of software engineering and data science skills. Let's say something like model optimization and on the other hand system implementation demands comprehensive knowledge in both areas, which is often overlooked. So let's say we want to scale an AI system, we may use tools like Kubernetes, but on the other hand, we also have to make sure that we understand what the data scientists talk about, like accuracy or F1 scores or anything in the data science world. So we have to be very good in both domains. So this multifaceted skill set makes the role particularly challenging and demands continuous learning and also adaptation. The fourth one is the constant learning pressure. The AI world is very fast paced and there are always new developments and frameworks almost every week. So the pressure to stay up to date and master these new frameworks and techniques is immense. Let's say two years ago, I had no idea about LLMs, embedding models, vectorization, vector databases, nothing. So the learning curve remains steep and the feeling of never truly being finished can be quite overwhelming for many, many people. The fifth one is the job insecurity despite the high demand. So this especially applies for other countries like the US where you can hire and fire people much easier than here in Germany, but it still holds true for Europe or especially Germany. So despite the high demand for AI experts, the industry is often very volatile. So companies jump on the AI trend and expect quick results. If then the desired outcomes aren't achieved promptly, then projects are frequently abandoned. So this creates job insecurity because many AI projects are currently operating at a loss and are dependent on investors. And when the investors say, hey, you get no more money, then you maybe let go. The sixth one is management and also clients lack of understanding of numbers. So management and also clients don't understand non-deterministic systems and the inherent uncertainties of AI. So it's very tough to explain that a model can't achieve 100% accuracy. You will often have discussions like, yeah, you increase the system from, let's say, 75% accuracy to 90%, why not 100%? Because they don't understand these non-deterministic systems. And this leads to misunderstandings and also unrealistic expectations and therefore a complicated collaboration. The seventh one is the rapid technological change. So models are constantly being updated and discussion of need to be revised and discussed. And this can be very taxing because you have to evaluate something new again and again and always question the current workflow. So this is different from just learning new techniques, but of course you have to get rid of old or outdated systems. For many developers, especially like from a more stable field like Java enterprise development, they struggle with this. The world moves much slower with established patterns and frameworks that maybe, maybe update once a year. But in the AI field, you are introduced to new models or workflows or databases almost every week and you have to decide very quick if you want to adapt that technology or not. So it's not only about learning, but also about deciding what to pick and what to not pick. The last one is unclear requirements and constantly changing goals. So like I said before, it's a very fast paced world in the AI field 
and AI projects often start with vague ideas because we are not very experienced in that field yet and you have to build up on knowledge and the requirements are evolving over time. So this makes planning and also execution challenging and can lead to frustration when the original goals aren't met or something new was introduced and the old goal isn't as important anymore just because one new model came out or something else changed. So there is a constant need to monitor for paradigm shifts or new hype topics and that also requires continuous adaptability. Okay, that were eight reasons to maybe not go into the AI engineering field, but I have to say, in my opinion, AI engineering is a very, very rewarding field, financial and also because it's very interesting, but as in most professions, it's not all glory and glamour. So if you are considering a career in this field, it's important to be aware of both the positive and the less glamorous sides. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.